If you are looking for some easy DIYs that won't break the bank, then you will love this video. I'm Jamie, the Crafty DIY Guy. Welcome back to my channel. as I mentioned, today's video is inclusive of a lot of DIYs that are super, super easy to make. Some of them are definitely for your loved one. There's a few Valentine's Day things that are in here and also just some really fun, simple DIYs that are not Christmas. I feel like for the last like four months, I've been doing nothing but Christmas DIYs. So I wanted to give you guys uh, just some normal DIYs. All right, guys, let's get into that video. <laughs> And for project number one, we're going to take this easel, this frame, and these beads. All of this came from Dollar Tree, of course. And then we're going to take a sheet of scrapbook paper. Just pick one that is kind of fun and spring-esque. For this frame, you're going to go ahead and remove, of course, all of that plastic. And then the back of this actually does not pop out. So what you're going to have to do is kind of put a little bit of force on one side of the frame, and you'll see that it does pop open kind of like so. So go ahead and take your beads, put those aside, and we're going to use those actually in this project but we're going to cover up the backing that wood grain is great looking but i want something a little more festive i'm actually gifting this to a neighbor of mine that loves springtime she's freezing cold and i thought that this would be a fun way for her to um, you know, kind of uh, look forward to spring. So I took my purple glue stick from Elmer's. I glued it down to my scrapbook paper. Now I'm going to take some of these white beads. I could have painted my other beads white, but I wanted to kind of save those other beads for another project I'm working on. So I had these beads. Why not use them, right? Go ahead and just put those back on your cording or your twine and then glue everything back into place. Just make sure when you do that that you've got your beads kind of set up at the right height because remember you are going to be hanging a picture or at least I'm going to be gifting this as a picture frame to my neighbor. Go ahead and just add a little clip, that clothes pin right back into it. That's such a cute way to hang a photo. And then you're going to start to reassemble your frame. Your frame or your backing there is going to just slide in and then you can just add some hot glue make sure of course that you've got the track lined up properly for your new backing on this and then you're going to squish this together I did use the shore bonders wood glue for this and it was perfect now that I've got this all set up you can go ahead and add your photo back in here obviously this is the photo that came with it and then this is such a cute way to display these these easels that you can find in the crafter square section how cute is this absolutely love this think that this is adorable now for this next project we're going to be recycling some christmas ornaments believe it or not these metal little windmills are christmas ornaments i picked these up at hobby lobby they were on the 90 percent off sale or maybe it was the 70 percent off sale anyway they were really really cheap i think they ended up being about a dollar a piece when it was all said and done and then those uh, little kind of faux wood backings that you see there those mdf backings those were also from hobby lobby and they ended up being right around a dollar fifty I think each and they were kind of the perfect size for this DIY project so go ahead and take all the tags and everything off by the way those signs did come with twine as well but I wanted to um, kind of string these beads on them they were just regular twine and um, I took the twine off of there and then I added the beads like you see me doing here so I went ahead and put eight beads on each one of my um, twined pieces for each one of the signs that was just kind of a a number i randomly picked quite honestly there's no rhyme or reason between it and uh, i started to string your beads now i don't know if you guys have ever done this or not but if you're having trouble kind of threading beads onto a piece of twine take your hot glue gun add some hot glue on the end of your twine and it kind of creates like a little bit of a needle effect and then if you need to kind of trim it away as you know it gets a little rough you'll see me here I just add a little bit of hot glue and uh, this is a medium temp by the way and uh, I'm gonna squish it together with my fingers yes my fingers have built up quite the calluses over the uh, last couple years here on YouTube and uh, I'm getting immune to hot glue sometimes sometimes it surprises me but uh, you'll see how much 
easier the beads will go on there and and sometimes those beads that are pre-painted like these that i picked up from dollar tree sometimes they've got some little paint chips or different things on the inside and it you know causes a little bit of issue but uh, when you do finally get those done you can see it's going to be super super cute here and then just go ahead and feed those directly through the holes um, that super glue actually really helps for this part as well because you do want to make this super easy of course and then uh, just kind of figure out where you want to tie these off and then simply tie them off and you've got your hangers for your two signs that are ready to go now once you've got these all set and ready to go you can kind of put them to the side but keep them close because you are going to be using them really really quickly here so go ahead and take your ornament and you're going to grab some of those crafter square little tiny square blocks and you are going to glue one on each of your windmill pieces that way it kind of sticks up from the wood backing and you'll see what i mean by that in just a second here now if you don't have these little wood squares i know that sometimes they're hard to find at some dollar tree stores you could take a jenga block you could clip that if you had a uh, pair of shears or a strong pair of scissors typically they can cut pretty easily or even if you had like a little scrabble piece or a little piece of wood of some kind just something to elevate it and then worst case scenario if you don't have anything like that to elevate this don't worry about it just glue it down or secure it to your wood frame now i've got my wood kind of blocks there on the back side and I'm just kind of holding them into place until they do set because it's not a perfectly flush kind of mounting there. You do want to kind of give that a little bit of dry time there. Now go ahead and just glue your wood beads right down to the back. Now I used hot glue for this because my intention honestly is to redo this DIY to use this for other DIYs in the future. So I'm using hot glue. It's very temporary, very easy to redo, but they're so cute when they're done. If you have a farmhouse decor, this could be perfection in your home. Now for this next DIY, we are going to take these adorable arched window frames. I love these so much. Of course, I love them because I have kitty cats. Then I grabbed some of these hinges. These were from the hardware store. Now for the backs of your little arched frames, you are going to see there's an easel back on there. Go ahead and pop those off. You can uh, kind of do it with scissors. You could do it with a pair of pliers. Pretty easy. Save those definitely for something in the future. For the hinges, I am just using hot glue on this. This held up perfectly fine. I've got this actually displayed in my guest room and uh, I've not had any issues with it. If anything, it's tricky trying to get those little hinges to cooperate with you, but you'll just go ahead and line them up. You want to make sure, of course, that your archways are flush. As you can see, that one is not exactly flush and I ended up having to kind of play around with that one after the fact and uh, take my heat gun and uh, loosen up that hot glue a little bit and then kind of re- do this also you want to make sure of course when you're doing this that you're putting your hinges on the right way that way your archways can kind of um, create a uh, hinged frame set up here now again uh, i'm just kind of eyeballing where my hinges are going you can obviously measure these out and you know mark it with the marker you can do all that all that stuff if you want to but for me i like to run by the seat of my pants and uh, i'm adding these kitty cat photos back in because i don't have a kid, any kind of photos yet but how cute are these i love the way these turned out now with Valentine's Day coming up, of course I had to do a Valentine's DIY of some kind. These little canisters are from Dollar Tree. They are so cute. And by the way, did you check out that pearl garland? You can also get that at Dollar Tree now. It is in the Valentine section. Definitely be on the lookout for it. They've got it in a couple different colors. I always think of Valentine's Day, of course, as hugs and kisses and Hershey's kisses and chocolate. This is so simple. Such an easy, easy gift. Give it to a loved one. Give it to a neighbor, maybe. Um, you know, a neighbor that's a platonic love. Or, of course, if it's not a platonic love, that's, that's, that's your business. But uh, we are going to just add those kisses 
pieces and then you're going to wrap your beaded garland or your pearl garland and the ribbon around the kind of neck of the canister there and uh, this makes such a cute gift i think you could give this to your postal worker to your ups to your fedex guy there, there's so many different fun things i do think that this would actually be a pretty amazing teacher's gift as well and when it's all done it's so so cute i love this i think it's precious and it is a perfect way to show your love it's a perfect way to show your love that is <laughs> Now this next DIY is definitely something for your loved one. I have these beads that I've kind of been chipping away at that I'm going to be using this heart-shaped frame and those laser love letters that I picked up from Pop Shelf. First thing we've got to do is paint our frame. We might as well go with a bright red color. This is a color from Arteza and these are part of their um, acrylic paint line. So um, this came in my set that I picked up at Christmas time. The laser love letters, we're going to paint that white. And again, I'm just using my Arteza paint. You could use chalk paint. You could really use kind of any kind of paint that you want. This is in acrylic paint. And I did just go ahead and give the love letters there um, two coats of paint. And I only did it on one side because we are going to be gluing that down to our frame. Now, while everything is drying, I went ahead and made a very simple tassel using some of this twine. I kind of like the twine with the natural and the white. I thought that it was a good transition with the red and kind of the natural beads that we're going to be using. Um, I'm going to be using those wood beads, you know, from that crafter square string that you can pick up. Now for the tassel, you just kind of make a big pile of twine around your fingertips and then you're going to tie it off and then you are going to kind of uh, create a tassel. I don't think I'm the best at creating tassels, so um, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but I think you can kind of see what I'm doing here. Now for threading the beads again, I'm taking some hot glue and just kind of creating almost like a needle effect point to the end of the twine there, and it does make threading those beads so much easier. This is probably one of my favorite tips that I learned a long time ago. Not exactly who, who I, I don't know who I, I don't even know what I'm saying. I don't know who I learned that from, but it's definitely helped me a lot. Go ahead and um, after you've kind of threaded your beads, now it's kind of time to make that tassel. I always kind of tie off a little center part and then just kind of cut those strings down at the bottom to create this tassel and then glue it on your frame. Glue the love letters on there and you've got something that is super, super cute. I love this so much and look forward to the day that I have a loved one that I can put in a frame like this. I am so ready to use this heart that I picked up at Goodwill. I bought this months ago and I have been saving it. It is actually kind of like an MDF. It's not real wood. It was brand new. Whomever bought it never used it. And I have been saving it for Valentine's Day. And I've kind of been racking my brain trying to figure out what exactly to do with it. Now, I had these kind of wispy purple flowers that I wanted to use. Um, purple is obviously very significant to my grandmother, as many of you guys know. And I was just kind of struggling with what to do with this. I wanted to kind of keep that natural element to it. I wanted it to really show through. So I kind of decided to make a swag instead. And I thought that instead of covering this whole kind of wreath form with flowers and kind of losing some of that you know that it looks like it's wood it looks like it's a piece of like log or something um i made this little swag and i just took some floral tape and just kind of created the swag and by the way those little purple flowers i'll never buy them again they are shedding everywhere as you can see and um, i had a little bit of trouble with the first swag because i made my stems way too short so i attempted to do the swag again and i finally got it in a good place here 
And uh, we're just gonna add three kind of little wispies on each side. And then once it was done, I stapled this sucker right to that wreath form. And I did it kind of off the center there, except for that one. And uh, I wanted it to really just kind of highlight. And then that one also didn't work out too well. Now that I got the staple situation finally figured out, um, I'm gonna make one of those little uh, bows with the zip ties. Um, don't, don't really know if this is correct or not. I think it's beautiful. I love the way that this turned out. I wanted to use this green ribbon because I just thought it was very simple. I also did not have any kind of, I didn't have any red or any white or anything like that lying around, but I thought that this was kind of perfect. I thought it blended really well with the natural wood elements, with the purple. I really did like the way that this was kind of turning out. And I just took my ribbon and just kind of fluffed it. My bows always turn out kind of circular. Maybe I'm not making my uh, bow ribbon pieces long enough, but I still like it. I still like it a lot, actually. And uh, I'm just cutting those tails into kind of those pieces, uh, those wispy little pieces, and uh, just kind of fluffing it up a little bit, trying to hide that zip tie there in the middle. I glued it down and added it to my door. I think it's super, super cute, and I really do love the way this looks. The photo does not do it justice at all. Now I know how demanding everybody's schedule is, so I wanted to create kind of a memo station with these house shapes that I picked up from Crafter Square. I also have these little hooks that I grabbed from the hardware section at Dollar Tree. Go ahead and take your houses, and I just kind of stacked two of them on top of each other. And I'm taking my screwdriver there, and I'm just creating kind of an indention of where I want to put my hooks. That way my hooks are kind of all in the same place or roughly about the same place. You know me, I don't measure a whole lot. Now you're gonna take your hooks and you're simply just going to twist them into the holes that you created, those indentions. It's gonna help kind of twist those in a little bit easier. And you want to make sure that your hooks are not too long. So once you've got everything all set up, go ahead and glue your houses together. I'm alternating mine. I'm using one that is a kind of a whiteboard, erase dry erase board, and then I'm using the chalkboard one, and then I'm alternating it back to the dry erase board, and then back to the chalkboard. That way I can create a very cool memo station. It's a place where I can hang my keys. I can leave myself notes, little reminders, my grocery list. I can remind me of all things coming up, including real estate school. And uh, I think it's super, super cute. I really do love the way that this turned out. For this next DIY, this is so simple. If you've seen these candle making kits that they sell at Dollar Tree, grab two of them or three of them. I would probably, if I could redo this again, I'd probably do this with like three or four of these kits. But you are going to grab a glass jar and these candle making kits. They come with three different colors of wax and you can see that mine was leaking. And uh, then you've got the wick inside of this jar. Go ahead and just pluck that out. And then for whatever vessel you're using, make sure of course that it is heat safe. And uh, you're gonna add some hot glue into the bottom of that. And then then you're just going to take your wick and you're going to glue that down. The good thing about this is that it does make it pretty easy to glue this in. You don't really have to do a whole lot. I took my wax and I'm just mixing them all together. Now those little chunks that you see that look like Parmesan cheese there, go ahead and break those up break those up. I kind of mixed everything with my screwdriver and then I went through with my hands and just kind of broke up those uh, larger chunks. And uh, it, it kind of creates like an ocean effect. I really do love the way that this kind of turned out. I poured it down inside of my vessel, my new candle holder, and it creates a cute little candle jar. I love the way this looks, and when it all starts to melt together, it creates one beautiful kind of transition that looks like the ocean, and it makes me very happy, and I love the way that this looks.
All right, you guys, let me know what you thought of these projects. I definitely have a few favorites in this video. I am so excited about just springtime and Easter and all kinds of fun DIYs that are going to be coming up. I've got some playlists here on YouTube, so definitely check them out. There's some Easter, there's some Valentine's Day, there's some spring, there's some normal DIYs. But most of all, I want all of you to know, thank you so, so much. If you are a subscriber of mine, I appreciate you guys so, so much. Thank you for being here. Truly, it's been an amazing couple of years. I can, we can say it's been a life changer, right? And uh, also, if you're brand new to the channel, hopefully you will stick around and become a subscriber. Hit that like, that uh, notify, that subscribe button, all those buttons, and uh, stick around for a little while. And I hope to bring you more fun DIYs very, very soon. All right, guys, take care. Bye-bye.